o'clock on Tuesday the 19th of September 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, bringing you the day's national top stories translated into English six days a week. Invited on our program tonight with Ilvatare, the Minister of Interior, Fatmir Jafai, clarified concerns about his past during communism, rejecting accusations made by the opposition. There is nothing special from my past. I was 30 years old when the system changed. I have worked for some time as a legal assistant, as a lawyer, and for a short period of time as an investigator, but never at the Ministry of Interior, as they are saying. I have previously said that I have never investigated or judged any case of a political nature. This is an invented story to attack me politically, declared Mr. Jafai. The Minister of Interior also spoke of the vetting process in state police structures, clarifying that it will be made using all methods, starting from the simplest of investigative methods up to the use of a lie detector machine. Mr. Ja Minister Jafai asked for collaboration with the opposition regarding the vetting of state police. If the police force is not cleared of criminal elements, it cannot be active in the fight against crime, said the Minister, adding that international partners will also monitor the vetting process. I have invited the opposition to be involved in this process, not with political representatives, but with suitable people, added Jafai. Commenting on cannabis cultivation, the minister declared that this is the year with the lowest amount of cannabis and admitted the implication of some police directors in the phenomenon. 32,000 cannabis plants have been identified this year. This is the lowest amount in the recent years. Most of the cultivators have been arrested. However, trafficking is another issue. In 2016, cannabis cultivation was massive. For this reason, the government prepared a special plan against the phenomenon. Directors at different levels in the state police were implicated. The cases were sent for prosecution. I hope the prosecution will move more swiftly with the investigations moving forward, declared the Minister of Interior. The Director of Public Administration has notified employees regarding some transfers and dismissals which will be made as a result of the change to governing structures. Through an official document sent to employees, the Director of Public Administration stated that any transfer or dismissal will be made according to the law on civil employees. In the letter sent to the employees, the director asks employees to submit any documentation relating to their education, qualifications, disciplinary measures and evaluations. The necessary documents will be analysed during the decision-making process and an evaluation regarding job performance will be made. So far, no decisions have been made. In the moment that the new structures of the ministries and agencies are approved by the Council of Ministers, more concrete outcomes for employees will be determined. After his meetings with the main political leaders in our country, the Rapporteur for Albania in the European Parliament, Knut Fleckenstein, gave a press conference today. Mr Fleckenstein announced that the opening of negotiations for membership with the European Union could happen as early as March of 2018. He went on to declare that there are no additional conditions for Albania's integration, only the fulfilment of the five priorities already outlined. The Member of the European Parliament put the emphasis on the implementation of judicial reform, for which he noted it is not going to be an easy process. I spoke with Albanian officials about elections and developments with the five key priorities. Creating additional conditions for the opening of negotiations would not be honest. But I can confirm to you that we at the European Parliament will work and encourage the EU stakeholders so that the negotiations are opened by the first half of the coming year. If Albania continues on its path of reforms, the decision will be made in June and everything can start in the same month, declared Fleckenstein. He went on to clarify that the decision for the opening of negotiations is not held exclusively by the European Parliament. The decision for the opening of negotiations is made by the European Council and not by the European Parliament. However, we will work so that the negotiations with Albania are open by the first half of the coming year. Albania should continue to work it hard even after the opening of negotiations so that we can also discuss other issues, said Fleckenstein. When asked about the cannabis issue, the Member of European Parliament admitted that it is still a serious concern. We are waiting for the report from our Italian colleagues who have monitored Albanian territory from the air to tell us how the situation is currently. But it is a very serious issue and we want to see not only goodwill regarding this, but also measures in place that work in order to maintain a better situation in the future, added Mr Fleckenstein. 
Gunnar Fleckenstein paid a visit to Albania with the aim of being informed on the developments of the reforms and the integration process following the creation of the new government. Speaking after the meeting of the Democratic Party's parliamentary group, the Democratic Party chairman Lul Zimbasha said that the electoral reform is an absolute emergency and that the opposition will start consultations with stakeholders. Mr Basha declared that the Prime Minister does not want the electoral reform as, according to him, Rama came into power only through the buying of votes with money coming from crime. The electoral reform is an absolute emergency. Starting this week, we will initiate political consultations with citizens, intellectuals and stakeholders. We will also start consultations with the opposition's allies and we will explore the possibility of joint stances with any political party that is in opposition. Electronic voting is an absolute priority through which we can make possible the migrants' vote, which has been our objective for many years, declared the DP chairman. He went on to add that the Democratic Party is open to anyone who wants to make a contribution. The DP chairman reiterated that the electoral reform will end the manipulation of votes and the vote buying phenomenon. The DP chairman also responded to the Prime Minister's statements that the reform should be made according to the May 18 agreement. Mr Basha reconfirmed his position that there is no agreement and he said that the Prime Minister is lying when he says that he wants the electoral reform. He claims there is an agreement, but there is no agreement, as Eddie Rama violated the conditions. A free vote was the core of the agreement, and he did not honour this condition. He bought the citizens' vote on June 25. This ended our agreement. My stance and that of the Democratic Party relating to the agreement has been made clear. The electoral reform is a necessity for the country in order to stop the destruction of elections through vote buying and the inclusion of criminals in the process. The reform will be realised whether Eddie Rama wants it or not, declared Basha. The head of the opposition also commented on the situation in Shkors, where the Inspectorate for the Protection of Territories will destroy 153 houses to realise the project for the extension of Tirana's river. The DP, em DP chairman emphasised his position that the government punishes poor citizens in order to protect the gangs. Even though Albania has concluded the conditional agreement with the International Monetary Fund, a group of experts from the IMF have arrived in Tirana. According to sources, it is learned that the IMF experts will discuss the required changes to the budget resulting from the restructuring of ministries, as a revision to the allocation of funds is needed. The draft of the new budget is expected to be released within a few weeks to the Assembly. The agreement with this important financial institution will be discussed in upcoming meetings. At the end of the conditional agreement, which lasted for three years and saw Albania receive a fund of 370 million euro, the Minister of Finance left the possibility open for the renewal of the agreement. Now a political decision is expected to be made whether the collaboration with the, with the International Monetary Fund will be on an advisory or conditional level. The collection of tax on apartments will also be discussed uh, with the International Monetary Fund. This is a good opportunity to increase the budget and the possibility to include tax on water bills is also being considered. The experts of the International Monetary Fund are expected to hold meetings with senior executives of Albanian financial institutions, such as the Minister of Finance and Economy and the Governor of the Bank of Albania. The National Institute of Statistics has publicised its report on the number of road accidents. Based on the data, 215 road accidents occurred during August this year, marking an increase of 8.6% compared to the same period a year ago. The reported data shows that 292 people were injured in road accidents so far this year, two more than this time last year. The highest number of road accidents was caused by people belonging to the 25 to 35 year old age group. Instat data show that the main cause of road accidents is careless behaviour from drivers. The data shows that the number of people injured in road accidents has increased by 2.1%. The increase of road accidents during summertime is connected with the heavy traffic created in the main road axes. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Infrastructure announced the start of an operation to remove commercial units from the national road axes, which are considered to be a source of accidents. The initiative also includes the removal of commercials that, ha that are unrelated and interfere with road signs. 
That's all for our English edition this evening. My name is Alexandra. Please join me again Monday through Saturday at 6pm for your local news in English. On behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.